I was invited by one particular campaign last week to come join them boots on the ground in Iowa across the entire state of Iowa for their campaign. And that is the Vivek Ramaswamy campaign. You guys know I've been really outspoken and vocal about not knowing at all where I'm standing on the 2024 election for the last several months that I was kind of like half in half out with pretty much every single major candidate, which was a really shocking realization for me because that's never how I am in the world of politics. I typically am a very decisive person. I've worked in politics for a really long time, so it's easy for me to kind of sift through the noise and the weeds and find my guy every single time. And I've just felt really uninspired and frustrated and confused. I have a lot to be said in the future about specifically what campaign I will be supporting and all of those things. I'm not quite ready to talk about that. But more importantly, I had an incredible experience with the Ramaswamy campaign on the ground in Iowa. And I'm so grateful for the invite and the opportunity to see up close and personal the point of view of what that looks like for what it takes to run for president of the United States. The day before me, Candace Owens was there, which was awesome. Too bad our paths didn't cross because she's great and I love her. The day after me, they had like four or five influencers and content creators come spend the day with them on the campaign trail. And they are very aware of the need to use social media as a powerful means of communication for the 2024 election. It was incredible incredibly eye-opening. I'm going to share with you a little bit about my experience here in just a second and share with you a little snippet from our day together about a 10-minute interview that we did literally in a stairwell of a random hotel at 10 p.m. after a very, very long day spent in the car. All of that to be said, I wanted to share with you guys a little bit about my experience in what happened in Iowa on Friday when I was there, the things that I was really surprised by when it came to the Ramaswamy campaign, and of course, our interview together from 10 p.m. in a random hotel stairwell that I promise is coming to you. But first, about my experience a little bit. This was the only presidential campaign for 2024 that had proactively reached out to me about something to do when it came to independent content creation and opportunities to work together. I was really, really happily, pleasantly surprised by that because you guys know... I have been hugely outspoken about how the right, particularly the Republican Party, has completely missed the mark with reaching youth voters, which is an important factor going into 2024, right? Because for the first time ever in this presidential election, millennials and Gen Z together are going to make up the vast majority of the voter demographic for who decides the president of the United States. It's not the traditional suburban moms rule. It's not the traditional baby boomer or elderly vote that people are trying to go after. In order to win, you have to start connecting with youth voters. And for whatever reason, most Republican candidates have completely neglected that opportunity bigger than opportunity, that responsibility, ignoring all of these things or chastising them or separating yourself from young people in America completely backfires in your ability to translate your ideas to a new generation that is really desperate for meaning, for value, for purpose. We've talked about this a lot, so I won't go into too many semantics on this on today's stream in particular. So when I got the invitation from the Ramaswamy campaign to just come spend the day with them, do a little bit of an interview for my live stream, put a vlog together, make some fun, trendy TikTok videos, I was really floored at their campaign's ability to grasp that concept. So immediately, obviously, I accepted. Uh, I jumped on a plane after many, many cancellations and lots of travel headaches up to Des Moines, Iowa, and spent the entire day Friday from about six in the morning to about 10 o'clock at night with the Ramaswamy campaign at numerous events, watching him do some media hits, uh, interviewing him myself. And it was incredibly eye opening the things that I was able to see and the things that I was able to learn about this individual that the mainstream media seems incredibly hell bent on trying to discredit, trying to make look stupid or even trying to isolate and alienate from the American people. So I went in kind of with my guard up. I'd never met him personally, but I'd heard a lot of mixed reviews about how people were responding to his campaign. I had obviously seen his performance at several of the presidential debates that I attended in person, was pleasantly surprised by all of the things that he had to say. But similar to Donald Trump in 2016, there was kind of this like rubbing certain people the wrong way phenomenon that people didn't like when Donald Trump had all these evil nicknames for people and people didn't like when he interrupted people and was kind of crass and rough around the edges. So I kind of expected a similar phenomenon with Vivek Ramaswamy and actually found the complete opposite 
about his character and the type of person he is, and more importantly, the type of dedication and stamina that he would have to be president of the United States, which is a very important qualifying factor Americans have fundamentally forgotten about in the last several presidential elections, probably because most of our presidential candidates are like 95 years old and can't remember their own name. So I was floored all for the right reasons when I was witnessing this person from six o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, constantly 100% of the time on, like on the money, ready to be president of the United States in the middle of a blizzard cyclone where realistically we probably really shouldn't have been driving, but we did because he promised to keep every single one of his campaign engagements that they had scheduled for that day, going to trucking companies on the side of the road, going to different event venues in super rural towns, family owned restaurants to make sure that his campaign was showing up in a way that the other campaigns really weren't. Most of the other campaigns took the day off, but while he was in the car for two, three, four hours at a time, he was constantly 100% of the time doing interviews with the newspaper or with magazines, doing live TV hits from the back of the car in the dark where his staff was having to hold up these incredible bar lights and a professional camera in one of his hits. I'm actually like hiding under the seat behind him so that you can't see me. And whether someone came to just take a picture with him or came to ask him a question or came to just hear what he had to say, he has that unique ability that very few people in the world have to make someone feel like they are the only person in the world even for five seconds. As for the funding thing, he is very much just like Donald Trump in 2016, funding the vast majority of his campaign himself. So I have no idea where this George Soros thing came from. It is kind of the insult that everybody on the right is using for anybody that's not Donald Trump, which is just objectively not true. Uh, but when it came to his character, I was incredibly surprised and blown away for the better with all of the things that he had to say. I had one thing that I've been criticizing him on for a very long time, and that was this under 25 voter thing, which I actually think he ended up articulating very well when I pressed him on it and asked a little bit for some clarification. We'll play that in the interview here in just a second. Um, and I wish I could show you literally everything today from our day in Iowa, but we have lots of editing to do for you guys to make sure that that footage is ready for you. We're putting together an awesome vlog of all of the stops that we went to, our experience with him doing news hits in a gas station and everything in between. But here's just a small snippet of what our day looked like with Vivek Ramaswamy at 10 p.m. in a random stairwell in a hotel because this is the type of stamina this guy has after the longest day of all time. Okay, so I want to start, Vivek, on this interview with the elephant that's not in the room, and that is this conversation about the RNC really not supporting your campaign and yeah. the friction that's existing there. Why do you think that's happening, and why do you think an outsider's perspective is so important? Well, I think it's important. In some ways, Ron McDaniel has proved my point. I, after I called for her resignation, it's not personal necessarily against her as an individual. It's about the results. After five failed years of leadership, we had disasters in 2020, 2022, 2023. What, do you, what else do we actually expect other than accountability? If this is a football team, they would have been fired, the head coach would have been fired long ago. Mm -hmm. After that, I think she proved my point when she said that I wouldn't get another ounce of support or cent of funding from the RNC, acting like it's her money. And the irony is her pay went up, what, three times, nearly three times over the same period that she actually failed as the leader. So it reflects just everything that's wrong with American politics. People try to treat other people's money as though it's their own, use it for purposes that don't actually advance the goals of the country. Every person who's in American politics basically today is a pawn for somebody else on a chessboard, depending on who writes the biggest check. And so I think it's going to take an outsider who's independent of that system, not to incrementally reform it, but to break it. Yeah, so we're not bringing a chisel to that, we're bringing a chainsaw. And that's what it's gonna take, both with the permanent state in Washington, D.C., but even the broken machine of partisan politics. And so that's why I think it's really important for more outsiders to step into the game. Something myself and my audience has been wildly frustrated with as young Gen Z conservative mm -hmm. voters is how much the Republican Party seems to be missing the mark with Generation Z. Yeah. They discount us as crazy blue-haired socialist crybabies, not realizing that there's such an opportunity Huge to really opportunity. define that national identity you talk so much about. What's your campaign doing that's so fundamentally different from everybody else on that front? My sense is, I think young people, I think it's true of all of us, but young people in particular are hungry for an actual vision. What do we stand for? Biden bad is not an agenda, it doesn't move people. But what we stand for, even basic values like the value of the individual, the family, the nation, God, which has become a four letter word, but I don't think it should be, that beats race, gender, sexuality, and climate. 
if we have the courage to actually stand for something. Right now, what is the Republican Party? I mean, that word is a hollowed out husk of itself. More than half of it wants to fork over more money to Ukraine, $200 billion that adds to the national debt that you already have on your shoulders that you didn't sign up for. One of the things I actually think is really, to me, promising about the next generation, and it will change the composition of the Republican Party for the better, is they're opposed, may I, if I may say this, we are opposed to foreign wars that don't advance our interests. We fought too many of them mm -hmm. for the last 25 years or more in this country. And it's critical that your generation doesn't actually end up in somebody else's trench fighting somebody else's war with somebody else's gun over your shoulder, which then adds to that national debt that you already have on your shoulders. So I think that's a good pitch for the Republican Party to make to the next generation if we can get our act together, take the Lindsey Graham, Nikki Haley, Karl Rove, Dick Cheney wing of the Republican Party and relegate it to the dustbins of history where it belongs. If we can do that, then we can actually look the next generation in the eye and say, we're the party that's going to make sure you don't grow up with that debt you didn't sign up for. We're the party that's actually going to keep you out of World War III instead of sleepwalking our way into it. We're the party that's actually going to say that if we are going to ask you in some way to serve this country, certainly those in the military are going to actually protect our own homeland right here at home in the United States of America. And I think that is uh, an important set of commitments that the Republican Party can make to the next generation if we have a leader at the top that can actually articulate and stand for those principles. And that's part of why I'm in this, not just that I'm younger. I think it does help to be from the next generation a little bit. But because I'm standing for ideas that I think will improve the actual lives and protect the next generation against the biggest risks that we face. Jill Biden, our first lady this week, said that Dr. Joe Biden, Biden, Dr. Jill, excuse, excuse me, yeah. me, important things, <laughs> said that Joe Biden's age of his of our current president is actually an asset to him going hmm. into the 2024 election. Well, she's a doctor. Obviously yeah. true, because she's a doctor. But do you think we should have age caps for the presidency and for so, public office? So I think Joe Biden has really obviously is, is off of his peak of mental acuity, which was never really that high, but it's but it's really even below that low peak. I don't believe in disqualifications based on age, just because I think that decision should belong to the voters. And I know a lot of people who are further in advanced years than Joe Biden, who are sharper than many people who are my age or younger. I mean, John Fetterman, for God's sake, would have passed the age test, but I think probably not passed much of the competency test. And you could say the same of many Republicans who have been stuck around, outlived their welcome. Many people who are middle-aged Republicans. I don't know that Lindsey Graham, when he says a given thing about foreign policy, is making far more sense than Joe Biden is. Often they're actually saying the same thing. So I think it's actually up to the voters to say that we need a populace that actually elects the people who they deserve. And that's part of why I'm in this race. I mean, there's positions I've adopted that people say they like. Well, if you like the positions, vote for me. Yeah. But I don't believe in eliminating people from the ballot box based on top-down criteria. At the worst extreme, that's what they're doing to President Trump, yeah. eliminating from the ballot because some guy decided that this guy shouldn't be eligible. So I don't want to make that same mistake based on age caps, yeah. but I personally think this country would benefit with someone that has fresh legs, is from the next generation to reach and lead the next generation. On that lives. note, then, you faced a lot of criticism early on in your campaign for talking about this under 25 voter having to take a test or serve somehow yeah. in public service in order to vote. Would you rather support maybe a national test for everyone in order to I do, to actually. Receive? Okay. So I do, but I think you got to start somewhere, right? Right. As a pragmatic matter, if somebody's already been voting for 40 years, taking that away from this one thing. But the way I look at this is we start fresh with the next generation. And look, I stand by the proposal, but I clearly, I think, have learned about a better way to explain it to people over the course of the campaign. The idea is the same, but I would just say the framing is, do we think it's reasonable for every high school senior who graduates from high school to have to pass the same civics test that every immigrant has to pass to become a voting citizen of this country? It's a good thing that we require immigrants to know something about the country. I think it's a good thing. And I think it's a good thing for every young person in this country to know the same. And we're talking basic rules of the road. How many branches of government? Who leads the executive branch of the government? I think it's a reasonable thing for someone to know before they vote for the fact that the president leads the executive <laughs> branch of the government. And I think part of our crisis of national pride is that we're not proud of a country that we just passively inherit. Mm -hmm. We're proud of a country that we have a stake in building or at least knowing something about. And so I stand by that. But the point actually is to revive a sense of civic engagement, not to actually mm -hmm. extinguish it. And that's where I'm coming from. And I stand by it, but I think that framing it more as something that we can increase the educational quality of our schools such that it would be a no-brainer, that every 18-year-old actually had that basic knowledge. I told the story earlier today at one of our events of a 10-year-old girl in Iowa who approached me. She's 10 years old. 
60 out of 100 is a passing score. She got 100 out of 100. She's 10. And so it just takes a basic level of effort and care. Yeah. And at a certain point, we're not going to have a country left if each of us is just two-legged higher mammals walking around claiming to be American but not knowing the first thing about the country. And so I do think we need to revive that. To wrap things up with you yeah. at 10 p.m. in a stairwell yeah. of a hotel, which yeah. is about as grassroots in Iowa That's as right. it gets, one of the things that really struck me being with you on the campaign trail today was how overwhelmingly young your audiences were yeah. at every single one of these stops. Do you have a message of support or encouragement or hope for the Republican Party and conservative America at large when it comes to Gen Z and the promise of this next generation? Yeah, look, I think that... I do. I think there's something about being 19 or 20 years old that makes you want to stick it to the man, right? <laughs> and that's where a lot of wokeism and then the whole, you know, woke philosophy came from was it was about identifying the invisible injustices that previously weren't identified, sticking it to the man. Well, what began as a challenge to the system 20 years ago has now obviously become the dominant system. So if you really want to be a hippie or you want to be countercultural or you want to stick it to the man today, Try showing up on a college campus and calling yourself a conservative and saying you want to get married and stay married and have children and raise a family and that you pledge allegiance to this nation, not to global citizenship. I think that is the countercultural movement of our time. And so I think we're a hair stricken away from a massive tidal wave in our own direction. And that's part of what I hope to lead in this country. I think that's why we're going to win the general election in a landslide. I think that's part of the reason why we're going to deliver a surprise result here at the caucus in Iowa, hmm. is many of those first-time caucus goers, many of whom are young, are coming out for the first time, and I think we're going to see the support of many of them hmm. in our campaign. Well, we can't wait to see. Thank you Thanks. so much for having us on Thanks the campaign coming. trail today. I appreciate you guys coming. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. So that was a super fun experience for me to just tag along for the day, right? That was a very small snippet of what our day actually looked like. Again, full vlog and some more interview content coming to you soon in the next couple of days. But I really wanted to share that with you. I think there's this distorted sense of reality that exists on social media that doesn't really exist boots on the ground. And the same thing can be said for the mainstream media, by the way. Sometimes that shines through on social media as well. And I want to address a few things about this interview that people have already seemingly come for me about, which I find phenomenal. Number one, I posted a clip of this on Instagram and on Twitter and on uh, TikTok earlier today. And that's this question about supporting a test for everyone rather than just anyone under the age of 25. I was highly critical of the Vivek Ramaswamy campaign for the last several months about this and criticizing him directly for this idea that anyone under 25 needs to take a test because I thought so specifically it was going after the youth vote. It alienates young people from conservative ideas. It makes it look like we hate young people, etc. That went really viral several months ago. But it's fascinating what happens when you just ask a clarifying question, right? How that subject and how that proposition was being covered in the mainstream media, by his opponents, by people on TikTok, didn't really encapsulate the whole story. In fact, not even did he let me finish the question before he interrupted me and said, oh, well, I do I do support a test for everyone. It's not just for young people. Instantaneously, my one major objection and my one major hang up dissolved immediately. And then, of course, he clarified by saying, you know, I think that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned on the campaign trail is that it's about articulating your positions and explaining them a little bit better and not just little one liner that ends up going viral as a headline. But maybe the easiest way for us to implement that is to make it a graduation requirement to graduate from high school, that you can pass the same civics test as any immigrant that we would expect to come into America and have full voting rights. Immediately, you have me. I'm on board. But all it took was one clarifying question that I never would have had the opportunity to have unless I had the boots on the ground in person experience there or had gone to one of these events in person, not a, watching a debate on TV. Then somebody ended up commenting on that clip that I put on Instagram. Are you in love with him? Like, why are you smiling at him so much? If you want to be a real journalist and be taken seriously, you shouldn't be smiling so much. Uh, to address that question, no, I'm not a journalist. I'm a content creator, which means I'm allowed to smile at people and generally be pretty happy about life. But just that question and the level of like divisive and anger people have brewing under their skin going into this election is a really poignant reminder of why I'm so impressed that this campaign is going around the interviews with the Wall Street Journal, the interviews with CNN, the interviews with NBC. The, it's bigger than that for them. This is about reinventing what it means to be a conservative, not by substance, but how we communicate it and translating the ideas of conservative values that we have held near and dear to our hearts for generations to a new generation that doesn't have
have access to that translation as it stands right now. And whether you think Vivek is the answer today in 2024, if you think he'd be a great front runner in 2028, if you want to see him as a, as a running mate for Donald Trump or for anyone else, or you literally hate the guy, I hope that that interview, even just a few minutes that I was able to share with you there, is eye-opening enough for people across the board in the conservative movement, right of center, Republican Party, etc., to realize the importance of new media, because I really do believe we have an opportunity with this generation that we've never had in modern history to reclaim and redefine pride in what it means to be an American, to have a sense of national identity again, to have a stake in the future of our country that we are fighting for, the importance of being a real authentic human being, and the importance of translating ideas to the next generation moving forward. 